some of the more common ways that we understand inflammation would be our arteries. Our arteries collect sludge. I'll just use that word. And we're finding, uh, as Dr. Bigman uh, reminded us, we're finding a much more direct correlation between infl inflammation in our body and artery disease than we are actually between a direct correlation between cholesterol total numbers and artery disease. So just remember that cholesterol has something to do with it, but inflammation is more important. Another form of inflammation would be uh, our joints. Who, who doesn't know their grandma or grandpa or an uncle who has arthritis? Arthritis is a general term, and there's many types of arthritis. It just means uh, painful joints. And there are many of us who suffer from arthritis for many different reasons, and that would be inflammation. Um, I don't know if you've ever had an infection, that's a form of inflammation in your body. Uh, bacteria or virus gets in there and inflames the environment and causes actually long-term damage. Every time you have something, it, when it all cleans up, there's still scar tissue and other long-term uh, uh, products that are in there that aren't native to that environment until the insult arrived. Inflammation uh, works uh, contrary to a lot of the things that we're trying to do at Insulin IQ, and we're finding a, a very positive relationship between focusing on lowering insulin and its effects on these inflammatory factors. We have this um, in body scale, and it breaks down. It's not really inflammation, but uh, we find that it goes hand in hand with inflammation. It's the uh, people's water retention. And the ratio we see uh, uh, on our scale is it actually divides the extra cell, cellular water, so the water outside the cells, divided by their total body water. And we find that people who have a really high ratio of that uh, water retention tend to have higher inflammation markers also. So my clients that come in that are extremely metabolically sick and oftentimes it correlates with a lot of medication that they tend to be on um, type 2 diabetes I mean you name it anything metabolically wrong with them those that water retention that we get a measure on the scale is usually much higher than the average person as well and so even though it's only that really only I would say tests or shows us acute inflammation because as soon as they stop, start dropping their uh, blood glucose level and start controlling insulin, that water quickly drops off of them. So it very much is acute inflammation, but it's a way that we can measure in our facility versus like going to a doctor. That's what I've experienced with my clients is I see that water retention dropping and in turn, their joints start to feel better. Mm. They start getting off their medications, especially their blood pressure medication. Um, and the, all their inflammation markers start to go down. It's not like this easy fix all of a sudden, but over time starts to go down. I've seen some of my clients in as little as a week. And it depends. It depends on the person. But some people in as little as a week, their joints start feeling a lot better once they start eating low carb but also it's not just eating low carb but it's also eating the correct types of fat so um with dr Sher and dr bickman talking about um atherosclerosis and such they touched a little bit on seed oils and stuff it's those highly processed seed oils will also bring up your inflammation and so just making sure that you're eating a diet that's really low in or you know, annihilate it all together, you know, those seed oils or sugar, especially processed carbohydrates, whatever it is, um, that will greatly decrease your inflammation, you know, sometimes, like I said, in as little as a week, but as Shelby also pointed out, sometimes it's more of a chronic issue and it may take longer amounts of time.